Good day. This is a series of videos describing Niagara's Welland Canal, a fun place to watch ships up close. In this video, I introduce the virtual tour and I start with Port Weller Harbor and some things around it. So we're going on a trip. As I go through this, I might repeat some things I said in earlier videos and I, I get into some brief history. So I hope my tour gives you a feel for the land around the canal. If you can come, I encourage you to visit. With a bit of planning, you can tack some canal time into a visit to Niagara Falls. When you are gearing up for each little trip, keep in mind that there are a few stores and washrooms along the canal side itself although it is surrounded by cities and towns. The canal runs along the east side of four canal cities. The west shore of the canal has a suburban feel for half of its length, which is reinforced by the walking slash biking trail. The east shore is sometimes farmland, but often overgrown or unused or inaccessible land. Luckily, the features we're interested in are typically near roads and bridges. I want to touch on visitor safety in case some of you come to visit. Most places along the canal are kids safe, like the Canal Visitor Center in St. Catharines and playgrounds beside the canal. Open bridges are not three-year-old proof. The pedestrian barriers usually won't stop them, but other than that, you just need the typical level of vigilance. Watch for cars, watch for strangers. Every year, thousands of people come to visit to see the ships in the docks. Keep in mind that the canal is a working industrial facility with inherent dangers. Don't swim in the ship canal or its ponds. Keep your kids close. Keep your dogs on a short leash. If you are sober and it's daytime and you respect the warning signs and barriers and fences, you'll be fine. So before we get into the tour, a couple of slides about where the two artificial peninsulas start and grow out from the original shoreline. And finally, here's places I'm going to look at at Port Weller relative to each other. All right, our first spot is on Port Weller's east side at the end of the driving road for the peninsula. Just west of the parking lot is the canal's wharf number one. The space is currently used as a marina, not for freight. Once in a while, a Coast Guard vessel will, will stop there. It looks to me like there's a fence north-south through the Wharf 1 area. There's an area beside the dock, which the Coast Guard can use for storage, and then the area towards the road looks like marina. Historically, this was called the Coal Dock. From here, you can walk or bike straight north a mile to the end of the peninsula. There is a walking slash biking trail. People will use that and they'll also use the gravel service road. The two run parallel. There are dogs. Some of them are on leash, some of them are off leash. Along the way from the walking slash biking trail, you can get a good view of the Coast Guard property across the canal on the west side of the canal and its SAR vessel. The Coast Guard building is actually two physical buildings, both originally built for the lighthouse keepers, for the lighthouse that used to reside on the end of the West Peninsula. There are beaver that live around this area. Bird watchers report them sometimes. There are a few beaver chewed trees here and there along the canal even up south of Loch 2. So there must be beaver lodges on some shoreline, maybe the West Peninsula, maybe the East Peninsula, 
the westerly shore, or maybe in one of the ponds on the East Peninsula. I couldn't find them yesterday, but like all mammals, beavers are good at not being seen. When you get near the end of the peninsula, the path forks, because the peninsula has two tips. The one I'm interested in is the one to the northwest, to the left, that has a solar panel on a pole and a green navigation light on a pole. The right-hand path goes to the East Peninsula to a red and white lighthouse. At the north tip of the peninsula, this is what you can see. From October to April, which is half the year, you can see long-tailed ducks that breed in the Arctic and winter here. To the south southwest, there's the Coast Guard property that I described. Straight across the canal, there's a, there's a lighthouse but we're afraid with the red navigation light on the West Peninsula. On a clear day, you can see the cities along the north shore of the lake. So Toronto's straight across. Uh, the smaller ones, um, Mississauga, Oakville, Burlington. You can each see a city center for each of them. There's a light tower for the green navigation light for the East Peninsula. There are giant hollow concrete blocks. These appear to be parts from an early bridge. There are five or six concrete and steel structures, roughly two yards square. They clearly got a quarter round that, that they rolled on. These appear to be an early version of the base for arrestor boom arms. If you go right down to the water and the rocky shore area, there is an exposed metal mesh sticking out from under the soil. I saw this arrangement at the Leslie Street Spit in Toronto as well. I think it is to preserve the topsoil. So they, they put the mesh down on top of the coarse rocks and then they built the fine, put the fine soil on top of the mesh so, so it doesn't get washed away too easily. You can see the red and white lighthouse at the east tip of the peninsula. For, for me, there's nothing of, of navigational interest down there. It's a fun little walk. You can see red and green buoys that mark the ship channel. With binoculars or a zoom lens camera, you can look and you can pick out the range lights going into the canal entrance. They're, all, they're on all day and all night, so you should be able to see them if you know where to look. Uh, the, the yellow flashing light in front and the fixed green at the back. They don't line up for you standing here on the East Peninsula because the place you're standing on is not in this safe ship channel. The backlight color is funky. It, it, if you're on the safe ship channel it's yellow. But over here, east of the safe ship channel, it's green. And if you're on the West Peninsula, which is also not safe ship channel, it's red. Now we're going to visit the small craft wharf on the east side of Port Weller. Pleasure craft can tie up here as they are bundled together into the daily convoy. The small craft pay station and pay phone that used to be here, they've been removed. These days people use a cell phone app to pay the fee to transit the canal. The vessel ASI Clipper berths here. It is used to support professional diving work for marine construction. Next, stored underwater, are some spare lock gates. Between this location and another farther south, there are three pairs of submerged lock gates. 
when the time comes to use them, they'll probably need a barge to heave them up and move them. Last, the pilot boat is here. A pilot is a ship officer certified to navigate in Canadian waters that helps guide foreign ships through the canals. Foreign, in this case, means not from Canada and not from the United States. The pilot boat is like a taxi that takes the pilot out to the waiting foreign ship or picks him up to bring him ashore. Some features of this boat, I'm just going to go around the small ship so its features are a little different. Uh, the pilot boat itself is wide, making it more stable as the pilot gets on and off. Imagine it's three in the morning, eight foot waves. You want a stable platform as you're going to hop onto a, a rope ladder. The signal flag H is flown, meaning pilot aboard. Common to all small boats is the radar reflector. It's three pieces of metal at right angles just to make sure that bigger ships get a good reflection on their radar. Common to small boats is a tire-sized radar dome. You could see boats, flocks of birds, land masses, weather systems. With these little units, compatibility comes into the conversation. Does your radar talk wirelessly to your cell phone and to your laptop? One thing it doesn't do is detect floating logs that can sink these little boats. The safety rail is interesting, again to suit the role of this ship. The railing extends right around the wheelhouse, but along the side of the deck there's a gap, where that's where the, the pilot hops off the boat onto a rope ladder. All small boats need fenders or bumpers so that they don't get damaged against docks. But pilot boats have a special need. They're always bumping against ships as the pilot gets on and off, so this one has black rubber fenders all the way around its hull. So that's everything about the ship. Beside the little building, yesterday I saw there were 10 cars parked, so I expect these are pilots' cars. They, they come here and park, and then they're off for days piloting ships around the lakes. Sunset Beach. This is near Port Weller's west side. It used to be called Municipal Beach. This is a public swimming beach. From here on the beach, you can see, if you look west in a line along the beach, you can see the shoreline bluff, maybe five yards high. This is more or less what the coast looks like before the canal created, right across where the peninsula is now. The, the coast was a, a bluff, maybe five yards high. Right over to Jones Beach, and it goes farther east. Sometimes there are ships in anchor, and you can see them from here. They're between two and five miles away from you. You can sometimes see ships going along between Hamilton and the opening of the canal or across the lake to uh, maybe Mississauga, all, all the cities there. On a clear day, you can see the cities on the far shore, uh, Toronto, Mississauga, Oakville, and Burlington. You can also see the escarpment crest in Burlington, ending in Mount Nemo. And you can also see the Milton Outlier, which is separated from the rest of the escarpment, as long as you're here, you could swim. The beach is a fine swimming beach. It has a seasonal washroom. It has a playground. There's a pay boat launch. Uh, in the summertime, there's a buoy line to keep the pleasure boats, the motor boats, and sea dews away from the swimmers. Within the buoy line, the water can get up to six feet deep, so there's plenty of space for adults to swim. Watch out for the local alligators. You can get water at the washrooms, but there's no other snacking facilities. Port Weller's west side. This spot is the west shore of Port Weller Harbor. Before the canal was constructed, this was the, the original shoreline. From here you can see the two artificial peninsulas built up from rocks and dirt 
excavated during the construction of the canal that enclosed the harbour of Port Weller. You can also see that Port Weller, as a port, is a sleepy collection of marine facilities. It's, it's not a thriving port the way Port Coburn is, or the way Hamilton Harbour is, with lots of boats and lots of business. From a land perspective, Port Weller is just a neighborhood within St. Catharines. Well, let's have a look around. Looking south, immediately west of the parkway, there's a pathway through the bushy forest that gradually slopes uphill. You can walk this path most of the way up to Lakeshore Road. This used to be a double track rail line and it was busy and it was part of the Welland Canal Construction Railway, which transported the fill for the peninsulas. You can also follow this path a bit, uh, maybe 50 yards, and then bend right into Malcolmson Park if you want to walk over to where the beach is. The wooded ridge conceals the original shoreline bluff. Behind the shade trees to the northwest is the Port Weller Wastewater Treatment Plant. In the summer, you may see turkey vultures attracted by the distinct aroma. Compared to other birds, turkey vultures have a great sense of smell that they can use to locate roadkill and similar delights. Sometimes in the treatment ponds there are geese and ducks, which is a little gross, the fence to your north encloses the dock facility called Port Weller Harbor West and also called Wharf Number 2. There is space for two big ships to tie up. Some dry bulk cargoes consumed locally, for example sand, can be unloaded here and some are stored in the sheds. Project cargoes can be unloaded here. Shipping containers can be unloaded and stored here. Uh, sometimes ships refuel here from a little tanker. Ships can stop here to take on people supplies as well. Note the portable hoppers for unloading from a ship onto a portable conveyor. During construction of the canal, one of the things they did when finishing the, the docks was they used floating concrete cribs or caissons. They built them nearby, they floated them around, and then they sank them and filled them with the rocks. So the concrete cribs were used for the dock side. Nine of them were built at Port Dalhousie before the break in 1916, and the rest, 37, were built at Port Weller. Half a mile past the harbor facility along the west shore, you may spot one or two red and white ships at a little dock. This is the Coast Guard Search and Rescue Station. At the north tip of the harbor, you can see the harbor entrance with a lighthouse on the west point. Within the harbor, you may pick out four red buoys on the west side and four green buoys on the east, denoting the ship channel. This artificial harbor is big. It's a mile long and a quarter mile wide, and little of its shores are used. At the time the canal opened, the ships were smaller. They were one third of the, the length of, of the Seaway Max ships, and there were more of them. So there was a perceived need to have a harbor to park lots of ships. Looking across the, the harbor, you can see Wharf 1, Looking southeast, you can see the, the small boat dock. And looking down to the south, you can see Lock 1. Along the west shore, from here to Lock 1, there's a tie-up wall. It's extra long. Between the tie-up wall and Wharf 2, there's room for four Seaway Max ships. The bollards, the round yellow stumps for ships to tie up to, are sequentially numbered for the rare occasion that it gets crowded. Around St. Catharines, there are bollards of different vintages.
along the road, 150 yards south, even with bollard number 19, if you look up on the old rail path, one of the utility poles has a flashing yellow light on top. This is the front range light for the Port Weller Harbour entrance. The back range light is not visible from here. So let's talk about birds. Any time of year, you can see resident birds, Canada geese and ring-billed gulls, all along the canal. But in the winter, this section of road is a great place to see water birds that winter here, and in the late winter, migrants as well. Binoculars or a zoom lens will help if you're a beginning birder like me. That's all I've got. Comments are welcome. Check out the other videos. Thanks for your time and I'll see you by the canal.